Morning, Wes. Good morning. Hi there. Um, what are the things as you look to evaluate yourself uh, during this past season that you, that are kind of your priorities that you want to take a look at and think about? Um, you know, from a personal standpoint, mm -hmm. I, th I think it's um, it's good to get player feedback because you know you can self reflect and, and, and pontificate to a certain extent, but you want to hear the authentic, uh, you know, real. If it's something of, um, you know, if it's more accountability, if it's more you know, um, X's and O's, whatever it may be, I, I think that, you know, those things are, uh, if they feel it, then that's something that they crave. So I think it's it's easy for me to, to say, I need to do this better. Uh, there's certain things that, you know, I think are obvious, but uh, I, I do want to kind of get a lay of the land from the player's perspective, you know, even from a coaching perspective, some of my peers, you know, we do internal peer review and it's easy when it's your staff because, you know, uh, you're around them quite often. You know, we all know our strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and I think it's important to have those dialogues uh, and be honest and transparent about it. Kuz mentioned this year that um, he said you moved a little bit further away from being an assistant and in terms of less X's and O's and scheme and maybe more working in nuances and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Where do you feel like you progressed in that area this year just in terms of were there things you let go that you mm -hmm. said you know what I don't need to do that well, I don't know if you ever let go <laughs> it's it's hard to uh, but I think he's he's right in that regard I think you know prioritizing some of the relationship piece um, you know and it's that's some advice I know I've said it before that I've gotten from other head coaches who made the transition from lead assistant or assistant to um, you know that headspace of you got to let go of some of the responsibility you can't do it all uh, I think I have a tremendous staff that I can rely on, but you know sometimes it's duplication. Um, so prioritizing, you know, I think the relationship piece with players, um, you know, I think it's um, you know kind of holistic look at the group and less worried about our opponent. Um, I think it's probably the biggest jump I've made as you know a head coach in my second year. What's missing from the defense, and how do you guys close that gap? I don't think it's you know that much to be honest with you I mean you look at the rankings and you know sometimes it's easy to look at rankings um, without context um, I think we're 21st or 22nd you know we finished 25th last year in the ranking but you know you see the uptick in offense and it, it's been like a plus four uh, from the number one spot last year to this year um, on top of I think it's one or two points and it puts us in the top 10. So it's easy to say, hey, these are the rankings and the rankings matter, but uh, I think it's without looking at context and seeing that we're not that far off. Uh, you know, I said it the other night, the biggest hole is our transition. I think schematically we're doing a lot of good things in the half court. Uh, we have to shore up the one-on-one -on -one piece, um, you know, but uh, I think overall we're doing some good things. Though he finished strong, I'm sure this wasn't the rookie year Johnny Davis uh, had dreamt of. Um, what can he do to have better success next year? Well, I think, think stay the course. You know, he's put in a tremendous amount of work. Um, you know, I think and he's, he's starting to see the, the benefit and the payoff, not just, you know, in the playing time, but, um, you know, what he's able to do on the floor. He's a much more confident player. Uh, we saw the defensive piece from day one. You know, I think he continue he can continue to lean in on that, which, which, which I think will be great. But just see his uh, confidence with his offense. Uh, of course, you know you got to be more reliable shooter, and that'll come with time with reps. Um, but I think he's playing the right way, and I, I like the level of aggression he's he's playing with. Um, how that how acute is the need for a dynamic playmaking? whatever guard for doesn't even really matter it's just somebody that can compress defenses and collapse them and kind of get you guys into your stuff earlier and make scoring passes well i mean honestly you'd love to have five guys out there who can do it you know and look around the landscape of the league not too many teams have one more or less multiple um yeah it's there's ways to do it without you know relying on one guy and you know i, I give brad a lot of credit you know, he's you know, known as a scorer, but, you know, probably sacrificed a little bit of his scoring to do some of that for us. Play, make, facilitate, um, you know, and obviously had a very efficient year individually. But, um, you know, I think that's, that's certainly a need that we can address subtly internally. But, of course, it'd be great to have, you know, 
dominant shot blockers and, and you know athletic wings and three point shooting all over the place. That's probably a wish list. Um, I think you have to find ways to get guys you know that we have right now to improve in that area. Um, but yeah, it'd be it would be great to have another guy who can kind of create offense for you, can get downhill, um, and to your point, collapse the defense and open things up for other players. Um, we, you do it in different ways through pick and roll, um, you know, which we rely heavily on. You know, I think KP did it you know, in some form or fashion versus switches, um, you know, in the post. So, you know, it's can we find ways to, you know, uptick in certain areas, but it would be nice to, to find another player uh, who could do that. You mentioned Brad being a playmaker, and he had some good moments in it, but he also struggled a mm -hmm. lot in certain situations, end of game, end of half. Is that – the best way to utilize him, even though it makes him more efficient offensively, um, would a somebody to get him off the ball more help him be more dynamic offensively in terms of finishing? Well, some of it is the spacing, you know, and I think, um, you know, when there's a little bit more space and there's a threat of more three-point shooting, it allows, you know, him to do more of what we've seen him do throughout his career. Um, and when you think about um, his clutch numbers, there, there were some moments it didn't go well, but um, you know, he's actually led the league in overall uh, field goal percentage in those clutch moments. So it's, you know, I think you look at the one, one or two games and, you know, I think it's easy to point out, but I think a lot of those were byproduct of our spacing. Hi, Coach. When you have uh, 35 games with Beal, Porzingis, and Kuzma, what did you like about their play when they had the opportunity to compete together? Uh, well, there was, there was a clear synergy between the three. Um, they were able to play off each other for, you know, in a lot of different ways. Um, pick and roll, of course, you know, Kuz pushing in transition, uh, the two man actions uh, between Brad and KP. Um, so I think it's, you know, very efficient. I think overall the net rating uh, was a plus three, <clears throat> excuse me, so, you know, pretty positive. Um, obviously, incomplete because you just don't see it enough um, and you know you, you think about that window of 35 games I think the longest stretch was nine games to start the season and then maybe three or four after that so it doesn't only affect those three the you know uh, as, as much of what they do for other players and the way we play through them so much it affects the the balance of your roster Wes um just logistically, have you already, the guys who had been stated out, did you already talk to Brad, KP, Kuz, whoever else was out about exit interviews? Have you already started that process or no? Yeah, we, I started probably uh, about a week and a half ago. Uh, I think about have maybe four or five guys left. Um, the second I wanted to ask you was how do you evaluate your both your and the team's approach to defense this season? Uh, it was waning at times, you know, and to be honest, I think some of that is you got different pairings and different groups out there. Uh, the availability piece affects that. Um, you know, I think we did some really good things in stretches, um, but you know, just not consistently enough. So I, I think that's just um, kind of going back to what we're doing, how we're doing it, um, and being able to maintain a certain standard when it comes to that side of the ball. Sometimes both. Last one for you. Speaking of Johnny Davis, when it, when it finally clicked for him, you saw it. Was it one moment for you this season with maybe a game, a timeout, um, maybe on a plane that you was like, ah, like I, I, I get like this is something good we can build off? Well, probably when he, um, you know, we pulled him up from the go go toward the end of this season. I mean, I mean personally for you. Oh, like, personally for me. I, um, I used him as an example, but maybe just for the coach Wes Unsell. Like, yeah. You went through, you saw like the brighter side or the greener pasture from maybe a negative to a positive. No, it was more the uh, uh, just watching some of his clips during his go-go stint late in the year. And that's when I saw, okay, this can translate. And I think it was just watching him play with a different level of confidence. And I think that's where, you know, when a guy's out there and he, he looks like he belongs, he feels like he belongs, um, I think that's a big, big step. And then personally for you, what was one, what was one of your aha moments that you are really like hanging your hat on this year, as something you can build off for next? Uh, with Johnny or just in general? Well, as Coach West Unsell. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing was going through that ten game lo losing streak, and you know it's like I said, it was certainly not easy, mm -hmm. but you know I felt the you know the overwhelming pulse of the group was positive, 
and that's where you felt like, okay, this is this is something we can build on. Coach, I have a question for you regarding DeLon Wright. So Koo shared with us on Saturday, just, you know, DeLon doesn't score a lot of points, but his play and his style of play, it impacts games. Um, Tommy mentioned just now in his presser, you know, DeLon missing 29 consecutive games really made a difference. So from your perspective, what is your overall evaluation of DeLon Wright and what he has brought to this team this season? Well, he's been a huge addition. Um, and obviously I think he's, He's got a palatable impact, you know, particularly on the defensive end. Uh, you could argue had he, you know, met the threshold, he would be in line for one of the all defensive teams. Um, we've talked about his hand activity. He's got great instincts. He turns teams over, you know, and that's an area that we've struggled in as of late. Um, but there's a presence, and I think it's it, it helps the group. But I think it's also something that other teams are aware of. So when he's around, he's on the floor, you know, it, it's disruptive to offenses. Um, it kind of bogs teams down at times. Um, and it kind of catapults us, you know, turning, you know, uh, getting us easy points off, off, off defense. Wes, how are you doing with the accountability piece uh, for your players on defense in particular? Well, I think, um, you know, we, we do show a lot of film. I think it's easy to correct in the moment. Um, you know, the games sometimes are moving quick. You try to address some of those situations at timeouts, um, dead ball, free throw situations, um, of course, at halftime. But I think you, you really make traction in the individual film um, where it's, you know, I always remind our players, I don't pick the clips, they do. So um, if you don't want to be in the clip, then, you know, let's, let's make sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. But it's not just to point their flaws. I think it's also teaching moments um, where, uh, you might not be in the clip or be be the example, but you know, these situations are something that we've seen slippage-wise that that need to be cleaned up. It's tough to do so. You know, you get past December, and January, you're not practicing a ton, and you know, with the number of guys we had in and out at times, um, there was always concern about you know players' availability, doing things live. Um, sometimes becomes you know becomes tougher. So we do a lot of muscle memory stuff, you know, drills and stuff versus coaches. Uh, which is great, but it's not it's not the same. So I think we have to see uh, figure out a better opportunity, a better uh, workflow to make sure we're doing more live play in practice. You guys <clears throat> finished as a below average three point shooting team, and at times it seemed like your success sort of paralleled the shooting. Um, how much shooting needs to be added this off season to become a above average outside shooting team? Uh, I don't have a number per se, but I, I think it's anytime you can put more shooting on the floor. It changes the spatial dynamic for everybody. Um, you know, obviously, you know, no Brad, no no Kuz, no KP. There's going to be a tremendous drop in not only the shot creation, but the volume. Um, you know, I think that's you know ties into you know what Da was was asking. If you can have another player that kind of creates, um, you know, gets downhill. Um, once you ignite help, that's going to open up more of those three point shots. Um, it's not just the volume, of course, the efficiency. And I think overall we were top 10 in efficiency on, you know, paint threes, the, you know, the ones we've talked about and prioritized. We're just not very high in volume. So finding ways to tr create more of those. Wes, you talked about the guy's character on this team and how it was good with um, Brad, Chris Stops, and Kyle out for most of the season. How did you see their leadership skills translate when they were on the court versus off? And how did you see their impact even when they weren't on the floor? Well, you could tell. I mean, you, you can watch and, and see both, all, all three of those guys, either, you know, involved in the, in the games as of late, um, the energy that they were trying to bring and the, the, the reaction to certain plays that our young players were making. Um, doesn't seem like a big deal, but it, it's a tremendous uh, thing for us to watch because that ma matters so much to your young players. That they're still invested in their development. They care. They want them to, to succeed, and they know at some point um, you want to see those guys take the leap because that's going to help us. It's going to help them. Um, so you know that, that leadership manifests in a lot of ways. It's not just you know talking through film with young players or walkthroughs. Um, you know, diagnosing game plans and really you know showing them some of the fine tooth details. Um, it's also being present. You know, and I think it's it's just as important. Hey, Wes, how are you? Good things. Going back to like the preseason back in I think September when we talked to you, um, you did mention that there were some tactical changes that you made to the defense to kind of streamline some of the things that 
you, you're going to do as a coach to you know, communicate and just run things. I was wondering, you did that job. Did you get enough buy-in back from the players? I think so. Um, now, you know, the buy-in is, uh, is not just what you're doing, it's how we're doing it. Um, and like I said, I think, I think the biggest piece that uh, we really struggled in was the transition. And that, that to me has nothing to do with scheme. It's just more you know, we're watching, waiting, um, instead of just having that urgent mentality to get back. And th that next layer is uh, most nights a lack of communication in transition, um, which we all know if you, if you don't communicate early enough, uh, the way the teams are shooting threes early in the clock, it can really put you at a deficit. So um, that's, the I think, the biggest thing for us this summer is we have to address that. And a little off topic, but last year you did, last summer you did a lot of traveling, Latvia, all that stuff. What do you expect your summer to look like um, this year as it relates to your responsibilities? Oh, it, was still, it will still require quite a bit of travel. Um, hopefully, hopefully not that dramatic. It was compressed toward the end of the summer. But um, I think it's important to continue to, to get out and you know, get, get a hold of players and meet them where they are. Uh, spend some time kind of away from the floor, um, you know, just to reaffirm and, and, and strengthen those relationships. Um, you know, obviously the, the draft stuff will, you know, will be upon us soon, so getting out and make sure you, you get to the combine and, and, and see potential prospects. Um, but hopefully it'll be a little slower um, as far as duration and distance, but it still will require quite a bit of travel. Wes, do you like how um, in your offense, how the touches usage shots, whatever distribution between your main three guys uh, met it out this year? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, it's it's, it's hard because we're going to rely on those guys so much, you know, and I know we've, we've talked about this before, but with, you know, to see where Corey is, is taking a leap. Um, you know, Daniel's done wonders, you know, from I think two years ago, obviously, he made a jump from last year, um, relying on those guys more. And you know, I think that'll take some pressure off, you know, those big three. Um, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily mean their usage goes down, but maybe shot attempts and, and most nights about equal. Um, but I think spreading that around, I think, and, and those guys knowing that we can trust and rely on those young players, um, you know, Denny to make plays, take some pressure off of Brad as a playmaker. Um, Corey obviously is shooting as, as well as he shot this year, you know, top 10 or 12 in the league, uh, which is remarkable. Um, so I think it's just also a, an understanding that, that these guys are going to help us um, you know, I don't think they have to carry that load every night. And I know I've asked you this before, and when we talk about getting a point guard who's whatever, more disruptive, more of a threat, do you need somebody to organize that? All? When, you know, Monte has talked about, I got to keep three guys happy every <laughs> night and get every guy their touches. Like, what's the balance that you look for in a point guard between bringing the organization factor and bringing the I'm an offensive threat myself factor? Well, I think you know. I think Monte he knows he knows how to do that. I mean, he's top two, I think, in assist turnover ratio. He's done that job at a high level. You know, with a really good team, and um, you know, there's a balance. You know, it's not always going to be perfect. Um, I don't want to have to call play every possession. I think, I think allowing guys to play with a little bit of freedom, um, and you know, there comes an accountability with that, of course. But. Um, you know, I, I think good players will kind of show you what they're really good at, uh, the spots they're most efficient in. Um, and, and the point guard has to become an extension of myself and the staff. Like, what are we prioritizing? How do we want to play? Um, you know, of course, keeping us organized whenever you can, and, and you're going to have to read it a little bit. You know, read the flow. The guy's got a game going, of course, you want to keep featuring him. Um, you know, if you're not getting quality possessions, you maybe need to slow it down. Uh, orchestrate something that, that keeps us organized. So I think there's a balance. Um, you know, I think it's, you know, with those three, they're, they're going to command a lot of attention. So there's going to be opportunities for that player, Monte, DeLon, to be aggressive, you know, on their own. Coach, as someone who coaches young men, I, I believe off court, so I might take them to Chuck E. Cheese as a team builder. How did that Japan trip build team camaraderie for you this year? I thought it helped. I mean, obviously it's, it's tough because a long trip for four days, but you know, just that experience, you know, it pulls that group together. You know, you, you have an opportunity to, um, you know, you spend 24 hours literally, um, you know, with your group. Players have opportunity to bond. Um, you know, you're, you're in a foreign country, so there's obviously different things and ex uh, experiences that you can go through. Um, 
But th- those those situations are probably more important to the bonding aspect than it is the basketball. Um, and it was tough to kind of you know flow through training camp, um, you know, trip to Japan and, and kind of organize you know the return. But I thought from a cohesive thing, it, it, it was very productive. Uh, well, I'll answer the last part first. I think, um, you know, he's got to continue to work on his handle. Uh, I thought he showed improvement there. Uh, you know, his left hand, playmaking with his left hand, finishing with his left hand, um, finding a consistent three-pointer. Um, I think there's been an uptick in all those areas. Um, finishing at a, an elite, not maybe not elite level, but a much better level, um, getting to the rim, uh, making free throws. Um, you know, defensively, I thought he was was good. Again, this year was much better as far as defending without fouling. Um, so there's certainly improvement in in, the, in those areas. Um, it's been a steady progression for him, and I think the biggest piece for him is the, his confidence level. Uh, he's shown uh, the ability to kind of fail quickly, move past some of the you know mistakes uh, where he didn't do so uh, last year, and I think that's helped his consistency this season.